Hey everybody, it's me again. Happy solstice. Yes, it's the longest night of the year. Uh, Christmas is next week. Um, yeah, kind of a depressing time of year for me, personally. Um, weather turns grim. Days grow short. Christmas tweaks everybody out. And, um, you know, I just try to get through it. But, hey, happy solstice. It gets brighter from here. Until next time, of course. It must be so weird for you guys down on the other side of the world where it's Christmas, but it's summertime, right? That, that must be so weird. It's sort of like when I went to go see my wife's family when they lived in Southern California for Christmas once, and it was like palm trees and Christmas lights, they're just wrong. There's just something really wrong about that. So anyway, um, here we are. Uh, I thought I'd come on and make a video. I don't have a whole lot to show. Um, I haven't really been digging that much and doing other things, but I got some stuff to show, so I thought I'd come and show and wish y'all happy solstice. All right, here, let's turn, turn me down. This is my last solo album, Gone Again. You can get on my Bandcamp page if you want. All right, let's start with some CDs, because why not? Uh, this is the latest Opeth live album recorded at Red Rocks Amphitheater in uh, Colorado, just outside of Denver. <laughs> uh, two CDs, a Blu-ray and a DVD of their set from, what, May 11th, 2017, something like that. Uh, I ordered this from Nuclear Blast, and it took forever. It turns out there was a big manufacturing delay on it. Um, but I tell you what, you know, <laughs> with the price of new vinyl these days, this was such a bargain. And I remember when CDs were so expensive. And So, two CDs, a Blu-ray, and a DVD for 20 bucks. Uh, so, Opeth, yeah, I, you know, I think I might have fallen out of love with Opeth. I really have grown to really kind of dislike their last record, Sorceress, and they do some songs from that on here, and, um, you know, they're a tight live band, maybe a little too tight in some respects, um, and he's still got it, you know, and they roar through Deliverance, and, uh, what's the, really, the great track here is, um, uh, Cusp of Eternity, and I'm not sure they ever played that live, or... So, um, yeah, um, I don't know. I, I hope their next record is a little, a little better. Um, or I don't know, maybe I'm just in a different place than I was back then. And, you know, what used to sound really ambitious and complicated now sounds kind of disjointed and half-baked. God, did I really say that about my heroes? Maybe, I don't know. I, this is a good live representation of where they're at. Okay, I found this at my local that has cheap CDs, and this was a nice find, because I remember when I got the the vinyl, I got the vinyl, because of course you do, right? And um, it was only two LPs and a, con a distillation of what they, of this box set, which immediately went out of print. Like, you know, that's the way it is these days. I don't know if you've noticed, like, uh, some of these labels that still do CDs, the CDs are limited. They'll keep vinyl in print as long as people will pay the ludicrous prices they ask for them. But the CDs are what's limited now. The CDs are what's going on in print. So anyway, I remember I got that 2LP thing, and I'm like, oh man, I really like, this is so good, I want the whole thing. And pff, it's out of print. And uh, anyway, so I found it still sealed for like 30 bucks. Four CDs, a booklet, 30 bucks. Um, this is The Scientist, A Place Called Bad, Numero Group, number 206. Everything these guys ever recorded, plus a disc of live stuff, and it's just freaking killer. I mean, it's you know, a really nice book, um, nice pictures and stuff, and so I don't know if you know about The Scientist. Oh, <laughs> Originally from Australia, with lots of personnel changes. They went to England to try to find success, which moderately. Uh, they were never really big in the U.S., and their records were always pricey imports. And so, you know, you had to be really hip and or rich to have that stuff. 
And so, um, anyway, this is like, like a family tree of the scientists, give you an idea of just how uh, convoluted their, uh, their personnel was. Um, yeah, so yeah, 80s, like post-punk, kind of, yeah, post-punk, I guess, I don't know. Uh, really good stuff, great songs, and like I remember being a little punk in the 80s in Boston, uh, like the you know the bands who you would signal your like your hip quotient if you could cover a scientist song. So a lot of these songs like I would hear on like the underground radio, but like you know the cool bands like you know Sonic Youth and some of the local bands they do songs like Frantic Romantic and um, uh, there's some other ones, but you know it was like uh, you know an indicator of just how hip you were. Um, so yeah the the scientists. Uh, Numero Group did a really good job. I think the sound of these CDs are really good, and considering how kind of mm, iffy those vinyl pressings can be, uh, you know, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. It's out of print. I'm really happy to have it. Awesome. The scientists. Yes. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, check them out. If you're like into that kind of trashy garage kind of pop post-punk kind of thing that sounds cool to you check out the scientists because they really they they did it up and uh one of their later guitarists was i can't remember his name but he had this really dissonant style where he's playing all these weird notes but like it works and it rocks and yeah it's like no wonder sonic youth was so into them yeah good stuff all right so enough with the cds enough with the cds right you want to see vinyl records you want to see vinyl records some more light on the situation okay recently got this in the mail the latest uh, what do they call it the analog africa limited dance series editions um strictly limited to 2000 copies um orchestra abbas de basari togo so this is togolese afrobeat uh with an organ driven sound um and this is killer 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 god these guys they're batting a thousand every time. I mean, I, I, I've said it before, and I am going to show my whole collection, which is almost complete, but I've been... Everything they do is great. I mean, if you like African music, and if you like music, I mean, how can you not want to dance to this? I mean, phew. now it's really kind of an EP, about 20 minutes of music, but holy shit, it's great. Really great. Um, highly, highly, highly recommended stuff there. And limited to 2,000, won't be repressed. Some of your other things they try to keep in print, but um, that's another label where when they do CDs, they're strictly limited. They don't re redo them. So if you're into CDs, get them while you can. Okay, this is a second pressing of our own uh, Daniel. What is your real last name? I don't even know. Daniel, I think, is your real name. <coughs> uh, Swedish guy. His band, Blameful Isles, this is their second record, I believe. Everyone in the VC was really raving about this, and I missed out on the first pressing, which was only like 200 copies or something. And there was a second pressing announced, oh, wow, a while ago, the summer. I jumped on that, and it's now, I think, pretty much sold out um, of another 200 copies. Um, so, you know, get on it while you can. Blameful Isles, Pleroma. Uh, two LPs on the Belgian label, Urban Waves. <sighs> nice stuff. Now, I, I gotta say, I'm jealous as hell. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, the gate full cover, the two LPs, the nice pressings, and, you know, I, I'm friends with Daniel on Facebook and follow him on Instagram, and he, he's made some videos, and, and uh, just like all you guys in Sweden, you know, I'm so envious of like these beautiful apartments and everything's so clean and bright and, and everyone's so beautiful and and you just living like this best life like here in America that it's it's I mean I I don't really have anything to complain about but it's like boy it, it doesn't it's not like that here it's really it's I don't know and I could just be projecting but anyway so yes yeah, so <laughs> jealous you know I I so want to do a double vinyl gateful thing. I, uh, but I guess I want to make music that's worthy of it. And I haven't maybe done that yet. And maybe never will. Um, this is nice. This is really nice. Um, Daniel's keyboard playing is really, really 
sweet and tasteful and um, you know if I have one criticism and I, it feels churlish to even say anything but um, I feel like I kind of have to because it's the same kind of criticism I have for like Kamasi Washington it's like you know that spiritual jazz modal groove thing it's like super fun and and I, I understand the appeal of wanting to make music that sounds like that but for me, like if I want to hear that music, I want to hear like the real thing and not like a decontextualized sort of, I, I don't know. But that's not all that's going on here. When it gets like into like sort of electronic ambient stuff, I, I like that a lot. And he appears to be, I don't know, 18 years old or something, so he's really young. <laughs> I think he's older than that. Um, those Swedes, you know, they don't age. Should I, I should shut up now. This is really, really nice, and um, I'm sure it's sold out by now anyway, so um, I think you can check it out online, and listen to it, and, and hear it for yourself. It's really nice. I've listened to it quite a lot, you know, so for, you know, for all that, it's, it's really very nice, and so there. All right, so next up, I, I don't know. I was looking out my wish list on Discogs, and thought, you know what, my birthday was recently, and I'm 55 goddamn years old, I want this record, and so I bought it, found a U.S. guy with it, and it's the Witch Find record, the Lost Tapes, yes, this is the Witch Find record that Sonic Mainliner was playing and talking about in his video, where I'm like, I'm hearing it in the background of, of his video, I'm going, wow, that sounds really good. And, um, and I've wanted it ever since. And, you know, I found a couple of other original Witchfind records that are awesome. And, um, but I really wanted this. So I order it and I get it and um, I put it on. And now, don't get me wrong. It's, it's great. But you know what's funny is that this originally came out on CDR on, like, some weird label. I think maybe one of the Serap surviving members of the label or something, CDR, and then this vinyl edition in like 2011 or something like that. Yeah. No, 2013. And I'll be honest, this sounds like a CDR dumped vinyl, uh, complete with like digital crackling and um, you know, digital clipping and stuff like that, which is a little disappointing. Um, not really getting a whole lot of advantage out of the vinyl playback experience, but... The music is great. The music is great. It's, it, you know, they get lumped into, you know, new wave of British heavy metal, but this is you know, 1975. Um, these are like their demos, basically. Um, and a couple of live tracks, I believe, is what's going on here. Um, really more like hard rock, you know, like less bluesy Zep kind of. Um, yeah, I, just, I really like them. I like them a lot. So, yay, I got the record of my dreams. But it's funny, my memory of it coming through my like phone, through Sonic Mainliner's system, through my phone, you know, doesn't sound as good as that, my memory of that. Does that make sense? No, that doesn't make any sense. Hey, Andreas, cheers if you're watching. All right, folks. Am I going to put this video up? I guess I am. Who cares what I have to say? I don't. <laughs> All right. So um, I got one more record to show. Um, I, I read good things about it, and I knew this was at my local, and I thought, oh, what the hell, I'm going to go grab it. And, um, it's the new folk sound of Terry Collier, originally on Prestige. Um, Recorded in 1965, it didn't come out until like 67, 68, something like that. Um, you know, one of those things, I think the producer like absconded with the tapes. And then by the time they got the tapes back, well, Terry Collier had gone on to do other things, or maybe lesser things than he might have done had this been released contemporaneously, maybe? I don't know. Gorgeous. So it's Terry Collier on guitar and vocals. Really interesting, two basses. Um, Turbor Attenborough on bass and John Tweedle on bass. Kind of like, you know, so 
Uh, what is that? Every time I saw, the first time I saw your face, is the Roberta Flack? It doesn't have like voice and two basses, isn't that the instrumentation there? So it's got that kind of vibe and a little more folky, although that's a folk song. Um, this is great. This is gorgeous, gorgeous. And I, you know, I remember thinking, yeah, yeah, Liz will like this. And sure enough, I put this on. And she's like, wow, what is this? And yeah, so it's good to score points with the Mrs. Although she, she likes everything. She liked the witch hand, witch find, right? Witch hand, witch find. She did really. I have the best wife. <laughs> I have not been drinking all day, really. Cheers again, John Kiefer. Thank you for your thoughtful comments. Not just John, but all of you. I've dropped the ball again. I haven't been responding to comments. Maybe in the new year, I'll try to be a better, better YouTuber. Better YouTuber, tuber. Better tuber. All right, one more record to show. The Kinks, Power, look. The Kinks, Lola versus Power Man and the Money Go Round, part one. American copy on reprise from 1970. Uh, apart from the hit single Lola, I didn't really know anything about this record. Um, and I'd been kind of contemplating making the kinks uh, like something I should focus on. I have a few kinks records, but I feel like I should probably have them all up through a certain period, right? Um, and I'm not sure about this period. <laughs> um, it's okay. Uh, it's like this British take on American, uh, like American folk rock of the time, like like a like country fied kind of like. I, I don't know if I want to hear British people playing American country music. Hell, I don't want to hear Americans playing American country music at this point. You know, I'll, you know, I just. But that's my hang up. Okay, all right. Headley, I still watch all of your videos, I, even if I don't care about any of that music very much, because um, I like you. Um, so anyway, The Kinks, um, yeah, I'm glad I found a nice clean copy of this, and um, I'll hold on to it. This might be this, the end point, you know, although they had some hits after that, you know, that maybe I don't need to have. I don't know. I have so many records. In 2019, I'm I'm going to do like a legitimate, real purge of my record collection because it's out of control. All right, thanks for hanging out. I hope y'all are having a nice solstice, and I hope you have a great Christmas. And if I don't see you, a happy, happy New Year. I have more to show you and kind of some exciting news, but um, it's not quite ready to go yet. So we'll, we'll save that for another time. Take care, everybody. I'll see you. Bye.